डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू आवर टूडेज टॉपिक इज़ रबर एंड वी विल डिस्कस इट इज़ डिफरेंट आस्पेक्ट्स दैट इज़ बॉटनी कल्टिवेशन प्रोसेसिंग एंड यूज फर्स्ट आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस दिस टॉपिक नेचुरल रबर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड इंडियन रबर और कच्यू इज ए थिक्सो ट्रॉपिक विस्को इलास्टिक मटीरियल इट इज़ अ नेचुरल पॉलीमर ऑफ आइसोप्रीन विद ए स्मॉल परसेंटेज अप टू फाइव परसेंट ऑफ ड्राई मास ऑफ अदर मटीरियल्स सच एज प्रोटीन्स फैटी एसिड्स रीजन्स एंड सम इनऑर्गेनिक साल्ट रबर इज डिराइव फ्राम लेटेक्स ए मिल्की क्लाइड प्रोड्यूसड बाई सम प्लांट्स द लेटेक्स इज कलेक्टेड बाई टैपिंग मैथड दैट इज एन इंसिजन इज मेड इन टू द बार्क ऑफ द ट्री टू गेट द स्टिकी मिल्क कलर्ड लेटेक्स विच इज कलेक्टेड एंड रिफाइंड into a usable rubber polyisoprene the synthetic rubber can also be produced over here it is normally very stretchy and flexible and extremely waterproof the commercial source of natural rubber is the para rubber tree hevia brasiliensis other plants containing the latex includes gutta percha plecium gutta rubber fig ficus elastica पानामा रबर ट्री कैस्टिला इलास्टिका स्प्रूज यूफोर्बिया स्पीशीज लिट्यूस कॉमन डेंडिलियन टेरेक्जिकम ऑफसिनेल रशियन डेंडिलियन टेरेक्जिकम कॉक सीज एंड ग्रेयूल पार्थिनियम आर्जेंटेटम ऑल दो दीज हैव नॉट बीन द मेजर सोर्सेज ऑफ रबर जर्मनी attempted to use some of these rubber plants during world war second when it was cut off from rubber supplies the use of these alternative rubber plants was later replaced by the development of synthetic rubbers the synthetic rubbers are sometimes termed as gum rubbers hevia brasiliensis initially grew in south america charles mary d la condemin is credited with introducing the samples of this species to the Academia Royal des Sciences of France in 1736 in 1751 he presented a paper which described many of the properties of rubber eventually published in 1755 this has been referred to as the first scientific paper on rubber in 1770 an englishman joseph presley observed that a piece of the material was extremely good for rubbing off pencil marks on paper hence introduced the name rubber later it slowly made its way around england now we will discuss its phytogeography rubber is a native of the amazon basin he and was introduced from here to countries in the tropical belts of asia and africa during late 19th century it can be termed as the most far reaching and successful introductions in plant history resulting in plantations over 9.3 million hectares asia accounts to around 92% of the world supply of natural rubber in 2012 the rubber seedlings are then sent to sri lanka indonesia singapore and british malaysia is now the biggest producer of rubber about 100 years ago the congo free state in africa was also a significant source of natural rubber latex mostly gathered by forced labor liberia and nigeria also started production of rubber in india commercial cultivation of natural rubber was introduced by british planters although the experimental efforts to grow rubber on a commercial scale in india were initiated as early as 1873 at the botanical gardens kolkata the first commercial hevia plantation in india were established in thakadu in kerala in 1902 in the 19th and early 20th century it was often called indian rubber in 2010 india's natural rubber consumption stood at 1978000 tons per year with production at 893000 tons the rest was imported with an import duty to 20% now plant description 
Many plant species produce natural rubber. Considerations of quality and economics, however, limit the sources of natural rubber to one species, namely Hevia brasiliensis. A member of the spruce family Euphorbiaceae. This species is widely used because it responds to wounding by producing more latex. Hevia brasiliensis, also known as the para rubber tree after the Brazilian port of para, is a quick growing, fairly sturdy perennial tree of a height of 25 to 30 meters. It has a straight trunk and thick, somewhat soft, light brown gray bark. The wounding plant shows characteristic growth pattern of altering period of rapid elongation and consolidated development. The leaves are trifoliate with long stalks. The tree is deciduous in habit and leaves wither from December to February in India. Refoliation is quick and copious flowering follows. Flowers are small but appearing in large clusters. Fruits are three-lobed, each holding three seeds, quite like castor seeds in appearance but much larger in size. The seeds are oil-bearing. Now its cultivation. Rubber latex is extracted from rubber trees. The rubber tree may live for a hundred years or even more. The economic life period of a rubber tree in plantations is around 32 years, up to 7 years of immature phase and about 25 years of reproductive phase. The soil requirement of the plant is a generally well-drained, weathered soil consisting of laterite, lateric type, sedimentary type, non-lateric type, or alluvial soils. The climatic condition for optimum growth of a rubber tree are rainfall of around 250 cm evenly distributed without any marked dry season and with at least 100 rainy days per year. Temperature ranges of about 20 degrees centigrade to 34 degrees centigrade with a monthly mean of 25 to 28 degrees centigrade. High atmospheric humidity of around 80%. Bright sunshine amounting to about 2000 hours per year at the rate of 6 hours per day throughout the year. Absence of strong winds. Many high yielding clones have been developed for commercial planting. These clones yield more than 2000 kilograms of dry rubber per hectare per year when grown under ideal conditions and ideal field. Now propagation of rubber. Propagation of rubber tree occurs mostly through seeds. The good quality rubber plants are raised either from the selected seeds or by grafting method for the good quality and better yield. In India, hevia seeds normally ripen during July to September. When the seeds are collected and the seedlings raised, the yield potential of these plants raised from the seeds has been low. Selection work on hevia with a view to improving the planting materials and the introduction of vegetative propagation mostly by budding led in course of time to the establishment of desirable rubber plantation. Now selection of seeds. Seeds collected from the clonal stands are known as clonal seeds. In olden days monoclonal seeds of the single mother clone not contaminated by crossing with undesirable male parent clone had been extensively used as improving planting materials. But now only clonal seeds of polyclonal origin which can be expected to possess significant hybrid vigor are accepted. Polyclonal seeds of good clones are planted in such seed gardens as per specific designs. Polyclonal seeds give rise to seedlings of good vigor and growth. Compared to buddings, they are easier to establish and maintain. The trunk of seedlings is much larger than those of budded trees. Owing to the inherent genetic variability, they are relatively less susceptible to wind, damage and diseases. However, the general yield levels are far lower than selected modern clones raised through grafting. The average annual yield is 1200 to 1300 kgs per hectare per year. Now we will discuss grafting. 
the most usual method of grafting protagonist in rubber is budding the principle involved in budding is the replacement of a shoot system of a plant with that of another more desirable plant in this process a patch of bark of the seedling plant stock is replaced by a patch of bark with a dormant bud taken from the clone to be multiplied the bud patch gets attached to the stock permanently and becomes the part of it the stock is then cut off above the budded portion and the grafted bud develops into a shoot that is shown exhibiting the characters of the plant from which it was taken the new tree thus formed is a two part tree comprising a root system belonging to the stock plant and the shoot system contributed by the donor of the bud depending on the color and age of the buds as well as age of the stock plant used three types of buddings are mainly recognized these are brown conventional budding green budding and young budding in the first method older buds having brown color are used while in the other two green tender buds are utilized propagation of rubber is possible through tissue culture also tissue culture or micro propagation is the technique of producing plants from small micro pieces of plant tissues studies on tissue culture of rubber plants were started in 1966 different parts of the plants such as embryo anther shoot tip and integments can be used for tissue culture now preparation of commercial rubber few steps are involved in the preparation of commercial rubber number 1 is crop collection the main crop from a rubber plantation is latex a milky white dispersion of rubber in water which is harvested by the tapping process 2 to 3 hours after tapping the latex collected in the cup is transferred to a clean bucket about 70 to 80% of the crop from a rubber plantation is in the form of latex the latex which gets solidified in the tapping panel and the collection cups also form the part of the crop and are collected by the tapper in a basket the dried up latex is also collected as a scrap once in a month and is called as field coagulum latex and the field coagulum are highly susceptible to bacterial action and therefore it is essential to process these into forms that will allow safe storage and marketing latex is a white or slightly yellowish opaque liquid the general composition is rubber 30 to 40% resins 1 to 2% proteins 2 to 2.5% sugar 1 to 1.5% ash 0.7 to 0.9% and water 55 to 65% fresh latex as it comes out from the tree is slightly alkaline or neutral it becomes acidic rapidly due to bacterial action the formation of organic acids neutralizes the negative charge on rubber particles and the latex gradually gets coagulated on keeping therefore fresh latex cannot be kept for long without preservative treatment latex can be processed into any of the following forms preservative field latex and latex concentrate sheet rubber block rubber creep rubber field coagulum can be processed only into creep rubber or block rubber now we will discuss latex preservation and concentration field latex is preserved using suitable preservative for a long term storage The process of preserved field latex consists essentially of adding the preservative, usually ammonium, one percent, to the sieved latex. Field latex can also be preserved using LATZ, low ammonium zinc oxide system. Now latex concentrate. There is a good market for preserved latex concentrate as it is an important raw material with a wide range of applications. the latex concentration can be obtained either by creaming or by centrifugation in these methods finally the latex is separated into two layers an upper layer of concentrated latex and a lower layer of serum containing very little rubber 
the lower layer of serum is removed leaving the latex concentrate having about 50 to 60 percent DRC dry rubber content which is often tested, packed and marketed. Now sheeting of the rubber. Latex is coagulated in suitable containers into slabs of coagulum. Formic acid or acetic acid is generally used for coagulation. The quantity of acid required for satisfactory coagulation depends on various factors like the amount and type of anticoagulant used, the duration of coagulation, the season and the nature of the latex. The coagulum is rolled through a set of smooth rollers followed by a grooved set and dried to obtain sheet rubber. Depending upon the drying method, sheet rubbers are classified into two types ribbed smoked sheets and air dried sheets. Formation of rubber sheets now. A major quantity of rubber produced in this country, about 74.7% is marketed in sheet form at present and it is the oldest and the simplest method of processing latex into a marketable form. For processing latex into the sheet rubber, it is important that the latex collected is brought to the processing center before the coagulation sets in. In cases where the latex is found to be prone to pre-coagulation, an anticoagulant is used. While sheeting, the coagulum is continuously washed. The sheets are again washed in running water in a tank. Mold growth on sheet rubber can be prevented by treating freshly machined sheet in a dilute solution of paranitrophenol PNP. The concentration of paranitrophenol is 0.05% to 0.1% in water. 100 liters of solution will be sufficient for treating 100 sheets. The wet sheets are allowed to drip on reapers arranged in a well ventilated dripped shed. Now some hooking. The sheets after 2 to 3 hours of dripping in shade are placed in a smoke house where the temperature is maintained between 40 to 60 degrees centigrade in the smoke house. Sheets are dried gradually whereby blisters are avoided. In addition to chrysotic substances present in the smoke prevent mold growth on smoked sheets. It is preferable to smoke the sheets on the first day at a low temperature 40 to 45 degrees centigrade. For the subsequent days that is the second up to the fourth day the sheets are to be dried at a higher temperatures not exceeding 60 degrees centigrade and fairly low relative humidity. Sheets can be dried by placing them on the first day on the reapers at the bottom region of the smoke house and at the higher regions on the subsequent days of smoking. Generally, the sheets are turned on the reapers every day for uniform smoking and drying and to avoid reaper marks on dry sheets. Four days of smoking is generally sufficient under normal condition, but during the rainy season, five to six days are required for satisfactory drying of sheets. And drying of sheets in a smoke house has definite advantages. It is quicker than sun drying and does not cause oxidation by ultraviolet radiation. Inside the smoke house, there is only limited supply of air and it is mostly filled with smoke and carbon dioxide. Hence, chances for oxidation of rubber are very limited provided the temperature is within limits. Also, the chrysotic that is material present in smoke gets deposited on the surface of the sheets thereby preventing mold growth on sheets. Growers without smoke house facility dry their sheets in the open sun. It has been reported that sun drying of sheets beyond two to three days cause slight degradation of the sheets apart from accumulation of atmospheric dust on it. Therefore, it is advisable to limit open sun drying to two days initially followed by smoke drying. The sheets may also be dried in hot air. Such sheets are called air dried sheets. The completely dried sheets are transferred to the packing shed where they are carefully inspected and graded according to the standards published by the Rubber Manufacturing Association. Now, properties and uses of natural rubber. 
natural rubber is a high molecular weight polymeric substance with viscoelastic properties. Structurally, it is a cis 1,4 polyisoprene. Isoprene is a diene with a double bond in each of the isoprene unit in the polymer. Because of this, natural rubber shows all the reactions of an unsaturated polymer. It gives additional compounds with halogens, ozone, hydrogen chloride, and several other reactants that react with olefins. An interesting reaction of natural rubber is its combination with sulfur. This is known as vulcanization. This reaction converts the plastic and viscous nature of a raw rubber into elastic nature. Vulcanized rubber has very high tensile strength and comparatively low elongation. Because of this unique combination of these properties, natural rubber finds application in the manufacture of a variety of products. The main use of natural rubber is in automobiles. In developed countries, nearly 60% of all the natural rubber consumed is for automobile tires and tubes. In the heavy duty tires, the major portion of the rubber used is NR, that is natural rubber. In addition to tires, a modern automobile has more than 300 components made out of rubber. Many of these are processed from natural rubber. Uses of natural rubber in houses, footwear, battery, foams, foam mattresses, balloon, toys, etc. are well known. In addition to this, natural rubber now finds extensive use in soil stabilization, in vibration absorption and in road making. A variety of natural rubber based engineering products are developed for use in these fields. Now textile applications. Additionally, rubber produced as a fiber, sometimes called elastic, has a significant value for use in the textile industry because of its excellent elongation and recovery properties. For these purposes, manufactured rubber fiber is made as either an extruded round fiber or rectangular fibers that are cut into strips from extruded film. Because of its low dye acceptance, feel and appearance, the rubber fiber is either covered by yarn of another fiber or directly woven with other yarns into the fiber. With that, I conclude today's lecture. Thank you very much.